Hello everyone, I'm Alicia from the Educazi channel. In this video, we'll be reviewing the Bluefin project, a Linux OS designed for developers, featuring a stunning blend of Fedora and Ubuntu GNOME aesthetics. Today, we're diving into the Bluefin project, the next generation Linux workstation, designed for reliability, performance, and sustainability. Let's get started. Bluefin is one of the OS images created by Universal Blue. Now, let's clear this up. Universal Blue isn't affiliated with Red Hat or Fedora. However, they've developed several OS images based on the Fedora Atomic Desktop to deliver some really exciting options. For example, there's Aurora, Bazite for gaming needs, the Bluefin project with a focus on developers, and Ucore for lightweight server images. Oh, and guess what? You can even create your own custom image. All right, let's dive straight into the Bluefin project. One of the standout features of this project is its website design. It's easily one of the most visually appealing Linux-related sites out there. Bluefin is a computer operating system built on Fedora Silverblue, meaning it's immutable and uses the GNOME desktop environment. Applications here are powered by Flathub and Flatpak. Thanks to the immutable concept, it offers near-zero maintenance and even includes GPU drivers right out of the box. The image is available for Framework PCs, Framework laptops, Asus laptops, and Microsoft Surface devices. But don't worry, if you don't have one of these devices, you can still try it out on a virtual machine without any issues. Bluefin is designed with developers in mind, as it comes with an optional developer mode. When setting it up, you'll find an option to enable or disable developer mode, which determines the ISO file you download based on your choice. By default, Bluefin includes VS Code, a container-centric terminal, and DevPod for those who need it for coding. Here's a fun twist, Bluefin uses Homebrew as its package manager, a tool typically associated with macOS. And don't forget to check out the Our Mission section to dive deeper into the vision behind the Bluefin project. To try out Bluefin, you'll start by filling out a form tailored to your hardware and use case. For example, I selected the desktop option, enabled the developer mode, chose AMD as the primary GPU vendor, and picked Enthusiast for the How Aggressive Do You Like to Update option. Based on Fedora 4.1, this resulted in a download size of about 7 gigabytes. However, if I disable the developer mode, the ISO size drops to 5.7 gigabytes. So, feel free to customize it to fit your needs. Alright, let's log into Bluefin. Since Bluefin is based on Fedora Silverblue, there's no live session option, so you'll need to install it first. The installation process is identical to what we know from Fedora using the Anaconda installer. Just follow the steps, select the installation menu, and you're good to go. It's a straightforward process that you can easily handle on your own. Nothing too complicated. Here's, here's what the initial look of Bluefin is like. It features Bluefin's default wallpaper, adding a nice touch right from the start. 
In the top left corner, you'll see an About My System option, giving you a quick overview of your computer's setup. Then there's the unique Bluefin logo, a cool dinosaur. You'll also find information like from Fedora Silver Blue, the GNOME desktop environment, and more. Pretty neat, right? The version of GNOME being used is the latest, version 47. The Linux kernel is at version 6.11, so it's definitely up to date. As for the look and feel, even though it's based on Fedora, you can immediately tell that it's not the default Fedora setup. There's a noticeable touch of customization, giving it a unique vibe. All right, let's take a look at the default apps on Bluefin, based on the 7 gigabit version I selected earlier. The apps are pretty simple and not overwhelming in number. At the bottom, we already have VS Code pre-installed, so I didn't have to manually install it, saving me a step. And as we all know, VS Code is one of the most widely used code editors today. Then there are the usual GNOME apps that you'd find in the standard Fedora setup, like Calendar, Contacts, Weather, and more. Since it's running GNOME 47, you can expect the latest versions of these apps. You'll also find Clapper, a video player, which is a nice, unusual touch. It's rare to see a Linux distro that includes Clapper, but it's basically for playing videos. And the community shortcut is a direct link to the Universal Blue Discord page. The community is already quite active, so if you're interested in Bluefin and want to connect with other users, there's a thriving community waiting for you. Next, we have the Container Box Buddy menu, which is perfect for those already familiar with containers or those eager to learn. It's labeled as a graphical manager for distro boxes. So if I'm not mistaken, this lets you run multiple OSs or virtualized environments. I haven't explored it in detail yet, but it seems closely tied to virtualization tasks. There's also a calculator followed by the development folder, which includes tools like Virtual Machine Manager, Podman Desktop, and DevPod. Since this OS is tailored for coding and programming, it comes packed with a comprehensive set of desktop programming tools. Podman Desktop looks like this. It's ready for those working with Kubernetes or Podman, so the app is already included for you. Going back to the app list, you'll find documentation, settings, image viewer, and input leap for configuring keyboard and mouse sharing applications. Finally, there's the mission center, which if I'm not mistaken, functions like a system monitor or task manager. However, it offers a more modern and sleek interface. Here, you can check your system utilization and view running applications and processes. Under Utility, you'll find tools like FlatSeal, Warehouse, Extension Manager, Tweaks, Firewall, Backup, and Solar for managing Logitech receivers, keyboards, mice, and tablets. So, if you're a Logitech user, the settings are already here for you. There's also Fedora Media Writer, Input Remapper, Sysprof, Remote Viewer, Logs, Characters, Disks, Fonts, and Backups, all standard utilities. What stands out here is that GNOME Tweak and Extension Manager are included by default. 
This makes customizing fonts and the overall appearance super easy. For instance, when I first installed Bluefin, the interface font size was set to 13, which looked a bit large on my monitor with a smaller resolution. I adjusted it, including the document fonts and the monospace display in the terminal. Under productivity, you'll find tools like Document Scanner, Paper as a document viewer, and connections for remote desktop access. All right, let's move on to the terminal. Right away, you're greeted with a fresh, unique look that stands out compared to most Linux distro terminals. The appearance is customizable too. Just like in text editors, you can choose from several color palettes. So even just for the terminal, you have plenty of customization options, including shortcut behaviors and more. Next, I tried NeoFetch, which comes pre-installed, by the way. The output features a dinosaur-themed icon. Super cool and unique. From here, we can see system information similar to what's in the About System section. Linux kernel 6.11, GNOME 47.1, and details about the packages. For the 7GB ISO version, there are 2,223 RPM packages and 41 Flatpak packages sourced from Flathub. Then there's Brew, which you can use to install new applications. For example, I installed FastFetch by simply downloading the installation package. And for those of us who've never owned a MacBook, at least we get to experience its package manager. It's a nice touch that can almost replace the need for a MacBook. Once I installed something using Brew, it appeared as a package managed by it, which is pretty cool. Bluefin clearly prioritizes enhancing the developer experience, and it does a great job visually as well. It's perfect for anyone who appreciates developer-focused features. On the customization side, the wallpapers are not your standard ones. Bluefin includes several wallpapers, most with a strong dinosaur theme. If you were obsessed with dinosaurs as a kid, this will definitely awaken some nostalgia. There's even an Ice Age themed wallpaper. As for the style, GNOME 47 offers several built-in color schemes. Fedora has really caught up with Ubuntu in this regard, and in some cases, it's even better, considering Ubuntu's color schemes also come from GNOME. In addition to the color schemes, the icons are familiar if you've used standard Fedora before. 
However, with GNOME Tweak pre-installed, you can switch out the default icons for others, including Yaru, which is iconic, pun intended, for Ubuntu. I've always loved Ubuntu's icons. They add a polished look compared to Fedora's usual blue tones. Now, with these icon options, I get the sleek Ubuntu feel while running Fedora underneath. And with Bluefin's extra polish, being an immutable Fedora system with GNOME and pre-installed developer tools, it's like having a customized Fedora ready for development out of the box. So, who is Bluefin for? Honestly, it's for everyone. While the technology is developer-focused, it's also user-friendly enough for everyday use. Go ahead and download Bluefin tailored to your needs. Whether you enable developer mode or not, the choice is yours. Don't forget to subscribe to the Educaz channel, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with your fellow Linux OS enthusiasts in your community. See you next time, and stay tuned for more videos on this channel.